Here, we're going to turn now to what we think is a very important conversation to um, possibly give some information. Maybe not enough is out there on this particular topic. We're talking about elective egg freezing. The process has been, has been on the rise since 2012, even bigger increase during the pandemic, and many women still found there's a lack of information available out there on the topic. That's right. And the most recent issue of Cosmopolitan magazine featured a breakdown of what women need to know about elective egg freezing with input from dozens of experts, doctors, and the real women on why they choose to do it, the cost, detailed considerations, accessibility, and oh, so much more. So today we brought together a panel to shed some light on the topic and share their own personal journey with egg freezing. So joining us now is our very own chief medical correspondent, Dr. Jen Ashton, along with editor-in-chief of Cosmopolitan magazine, Jessica Pels, and and ABC News contributor Alicia Quarles. Welcome, everyone. And, and Jessica, I'm going to start with you because we just said this. The U.S., uh, we've been talking about this egg freezing boom for a while now, mm -hmm. especially during the pandemic. As you started your own journey, despite this boom, you noticed that there was a real lack in information for what women could access. Tell us about what you found. Well, so we are the first generation of women to really have access to this option. Our mothers didn't go through this. Egg freezing was developed in the 1980s, but it wasn't until 2012 that it lost its experimental status and became more widely accessible to women across the country. Um, so for women now who are going through it, the likelihood is that they're the first person they know who has done this thing. What I found when I went through it in January of this year is that A, it's not a decision you make lightly. It's expensive, it's complicated, it's very taxing on your body. Is that what you found, Alicia? And I had no idea. We worked together yeah. now here about a year. It's not, not it, like it's the first thing you would mention <laughs> at, uh, at a lunch or anything, but, but you recently went through this. And to her point, did you find that you were piecemealing, Googling, YouTubing? And uh, where did you get your information? A thousand percent. And this was over years. I'm 39 right. now. I first sought to freeze my eggs at 34. And I was with somebody for 13 years, married for seven. So never in my wildest dreams did I think I'd even have to be freezing my eggs. But reality happens. And my sister and friends were like, look, freeze your eggs. You want to be a mom? I went to a doctor that was recommended years ago. He was very, you've got time, don't do it now. Mm -hmm. I went back to him this past year. He goes, oh, you have a fibroid, sorry, you can't do it. And it felt devastating as a woman. But I talked to other friends. My friend Valerie recommended the right doctor. That's important women, doctor shop until you find the right one. Generation Next Fertility. She goes, don't worry about your fibroid, we're doing this. And I did it. Um, and it was the best thing that I ever did. But information is really not out there. Wow. And so, Dr. Jen, yes, for yeah. women who are out there considering it, thinking, hey, I'm of that age, I want to do this, what should they be weighing in terms of risks? And we know the benefits, uh, but what are the risks involved? Well, I think, first of all, OBGYNs should be having this conversation with women in their 20s proactively. So that's the first thing. And so that's a call to action for within the medical community and within the field of women's health. You know, and in terms of the risks, uh, you know, because you've been, we've been working together for so long, it's always about benefits versus risks. I think the first thing is for women to realize this is not a guarantee, but it is a, an incredibly empowering proactive step for your reproduction productive health that you can take. There's physical risks, even though they're low likelihood, something called ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. There's a small risk of infection. Obviously, we've talked about the financial risks. There are also psychological and emotional risks. This is not like going to get a haircut or a manicure. Um, it can be a big deal or it can be a process that's over in a period of two months, but you always have to balance the risks. But, yes, is that kind of what you did? It, it sounds like you were such a student uh, and now you're trying to pass along what you learned and put it in one place but still what what I guess surprised you that you really want to convey it seemed like so many factors but still is there something that stands out to you for a woman that's listening now that hey you need to hear this part that maybe surprised you I would say the first is how complicated it is. There are endless steps. There are excessive doctor's appointments. You're getting blood work done every other day. You're having a vaginal ultrasound every other day. There are injections that you have to give yourself or have a partner give you. There is a surgical procedure at the end of the process that you, they put you under for. Um, so there's a lot. It's, a, it's an action-packed month, wow. I'll say that. <laughs> um, the second is how expensive it is. The average cost of egg freezing for someone who is uninsured is 50 
$16,000, and 80% of the people seeking fertility care right now are uninsured. So one of the things we really wanted to do was give them a lot of resources to help them fund this process. Uh, there's a company called Stork Club that will advocate on your behalf to your company to help them expand their coverage to include fertility. There's a company called Freeze that will help you cost compare across clinics online. There's even a company called My Egg Bank that will cover the cost of your cycle mm. in exchange for some of your eggs. But you know what, Jessica, I'm glad to hear you use the term fertility care, because I think that that really represents a shift in paradigm that we have started in this country and with talks like this from treating infertility to being proactive about fertility, mm. to deal with an issue before it becomes a problem. So, Alicia, why was it so important for you to share your story to that end in changing that paradigm? Well, I think um, you hit it early. Uh, doctors don't tell you freeze your eggs in your early 30s, your late 20s. TJ, to your point, we've all worked together for a year and you all didn't really know I was going through the process because I was sharing it on social media and I stopped because I got so much pushback from people being like, you're overly sharing, you know, why are you doing this? Some people were very religious and they thought that it was anti-religion that I was doing this. My own mother, who I love and adore, she couldn't believe I was gonna talk about this today because it's so intimate, but that's the point. We have to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is power, so I want women to know it's not scary. Ask questions of your doctor. It does cost a lot of money, even if you're insured, but it is so worth it. It's alleviated that stress of me trying to find Mr. Right for now. Well, I'm feeling a little better. I can I, see the emotion yeah. in your face, and yeah. this is you know, such a personal decision for everyone, and it shouldn't be yeah. about what other people think. But I'm curious, Dr. Jen, and I'm gonna ask this of all of you, for women who are watching at home who are wondering, you know, what's the good age? What's the wrong age? Like, wh where and when and how do you start? Should you start? Well, I think anywhere from 25 to 35, there's no one right age. My own daughter, who's almost 22, plans to do this in her mid-20s, and I've totally supported her in that. You know, again, you don't want to have that stress medically, biologically, or physically to say, oh my gosh, I'm running out of time. So taking care of it before it becomes a problem, that, that's the, you know, the way to do things in overall health. Jessica? I wish I had done this earlier. I am 34, about to be 35. And uh, when I found out that uh, you can test your AMH level, antimalarian hormone is an indicator of your egg reserve, you can test that level at any time. I was absolutely shocked. I thought that getting insight into my fertility was some difficult shrouded thing. But the truth is it's there if we just ask for it. Uh, and so I certainly wish that I had started and thought to ask that question earlier. Alicia? And then I think also just talk to your friends. Those fertility drugs, each drug that I would order is $1,000. And my doctors were great, don't order them all at once. But then suddenly if you run out, you have to have them. But it was my trigger date. It was my time to, you know, retrieve my eggs. And now I'm stuck with thousands of dollars of uh, medicine that I hopefully won't use again in my refrigerator. I want to help another woman out and figure out what to do with that. But it's just mm. things they don't wow. tell you. Wow. Wow. So great. Um, ladies, thank you. Uh, look, this is an incredibly, I've never sat and had a conversation like this, certainly haven't seen a lot on TV uh, like this, but you all are sharing your personal journeys and to destigmatize what we're talking about here. Um, so thank you. Good to have you here in studio. Alicia, we'll see you very, very soon. Thank you, Dr. Jen, thank you as yep. well. An empowering conversation. Thank you for all of that. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.